you are an entrepreneur, a professional, a speaker, or a coach, and although you've come a long way, it's time for you to take it to the next level. We've got you. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. We'll help you use authority and influencer marketing to build your business stronger and faster by publishing a book. You'll hear from guests that are thought leaders in sales, marketing, networking, communication, social media, promotion, and business leadership. Let's do it. This is the Author to Authority Podcast. And now your host, the extraordinary word ninja, Kim Thompson Pinder. Welcome to the Author to Authority Podcast. I'm your host, Kim Thompson Pinder. And I'm so excited to announce that in August, we will be having the 400th episode of the Author to Authority Podcast. And in celebration of that, I have decided to do the top 25 episodes of the Author to Authority podcast for the whole summer. And we will celebrate the 400 about mid-August, so there'll be a couple of episodes after that. And I chose these episodes because they were the ones that I just personally felt were the ones that gave tremendous amount of value that were going to help you as an entrepreneur, professional, a speaker, a coach to move your business forward. These were value-packed episodes that are just going to give you action steps that are just going to really propel you to the next level. So I'd love for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this top 25 episode. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today my voice is low and deep and a bit on the rough side. So I think I'm going to let today's guest do most of the talking. Now, Vinny post, post, oh, he said it to me like several times. I'm still going to get it wrong. Anyway, Vinny, he'll correct yeah, it when, how you he's, doing? <laughs> when he's got his chance. <laughs> is an Emmy Award-winning media advisor who helps clients leverage their media exposure, find fame, and make impact. Vinny is the editor-in-chief of I Have a Podcast and is responsible for discovering and amplifying the voice of independent podcasters worldwide. And today we're going to talk about it so that, talk about how to make it so that people, but even potential clients, can find you. So welcome to the show, Vinny. I welcome. Thank you for having me. They're so funny with the last name Podestivo. Vinny po- like I say that like it's so difficult. You know, Vinny Podestivo. Like that's like uh, I, don't I know. was thinking Podestivo. Podestivo. Yeah. Po- that's another way of saying it again. So. Po- my family they do the syllables, the Podestivo. Like you know, the hand kind of gets going on with it. I used to think that was like the Staten I- the the Italian dialect, but that's really the Staten Island dialect <laughs> coming out, but. Yeah, I'm born and raised here in New York. I stayed in New York my entire creative career and here in Brooklyn now. And I'm still like not a lot of Vinnies out here in this world. It was just so strange. But if anyone knows any Vinnies out there, please make the introduction. This is like a Vinny to Vinny out there. This is my, this is how I use the law of attraction, telling you what I'm looking for. I want to meet another Vinny. For some reason, I feel called to say that. (laughs) Believe it or not. I have met very few Kims in my lifetime. (laughs) How about that? You know, I had a best friend named Kim when I was little. Have not met many Kims in years and then just moved to a new area and I've won. (coughs) Oh, wow. Is there a... Is there a difference between Kim's and Kimberly's? Is there a conversation to be had about that? Most people, their parents name them Kimberly and everyone calls them Kim. My parents went, well, since everyone's going to call me Kim, why name me Kimberly? So they just named me Kim, but everyone <laughs> assumes that I'm a Kimberly. Well, you could and be Kim or Burley. I have I have a friend whose name is Burley, and she went the other direction. So, you know, took matters into their hands, and they, they helped make a decision, you know, <laughs> point you in a direction that they felt was best for you. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vinny. So much in a name. So much in a name, by the way. I My name is Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. I changed the spelling of my name when I got to college. For me, okay. it was like a, a moment to 
to, well, first off, my father and I had the same name. So Vinny with an IE was uh, shortened. And, and someone told me that IE in Italian and French, I believe, is sort of feminine. So I thought that was really cool as a gay man who, who at a point in time in society didn't have the rights that I currently have now, mm-hmm. where I can kind of throw out a little, a little secret rainbow flag to people who knew, if they knew what they knew, then they would see it. And it's sort of been... A, so much goes in the name. So much so that I, when I left MTV, or even before I got to MTV, I started my company and it was Vinnie Potestivo Entertainment. So mm-hmm. putting my name on something that I create is part of the responsibility of being a creator. I think that's a big part of how I've been able to do what I do for such a long time. Well, I think you need to be able to own who you are. If you're going to stand out, then, you know, I mean, in today's world, it's whatever name you choose. I mean, but... You want to own your name and own who you are and and be proud and be confident in that. And if you aren't, it comes across. And I think that will tie in with today's topic. But tell me, how how did you come to be the editor-in-chief of I Have a Podcast? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just have a career obsession with launching talent, finding talent. In the late 90s, I started my own database while in college. That database helped me launch projects for Fox News and MTV News, and I stayed at MTV News and then MTV for 10 years, and I got to to usher in all the modern storytellers who needed to tell their story through television to get an audience. People like Ashton Kutcher and and Sharon Osbourne and Diddy and Jessica Simpson and Ashley Simpson, like impactful solopreneurs, really, to be honest, if you look at the the construct of an artist, a solopreneur or a small business owner you know, I'm a founder led business owner who is the face of their brand. And I have had that experience since the late nineties. You said something at the top of this podcast that was like, it was eye opening to me. You said, we have to own, we can own it. There's so much to be said about ownership. And there's so much to be said about the ability that, especially as podcasters that we have to own Mm. our own content now. The one thing we have in common is we make content. The one thing you don't have in common with Nick Cannon from Wild and Out or Jessica Simpson for Newlyweds is you own your show. (laughs) They don't own their show. There's power in that. I bet they would have launched. By the way, that's why celebrities are launching podcasts and digital series so they can leverage exactly as you said. So that you have to own. First off, you have to own it so that you can leverage it in the marketplace. And leveraging it can be collaborating it can be collaborating on a creative level. It can be, you know, on a business level. I just believe that small businesses have such power and control over how we treat each other. Now that creative properties can be owned by small business owners, especially podcasts, I know mm-hmm. how to leverage podcast into broadcast, into terrestrial and satellite and digital radio. I know how to help business owners stand out and help them get discovered, not by making them more visible, but by making them more shareable, by making them more talked about, by giving them more authority, by helping them win awards, showing them where to take and give and get credits, Mm -hmm. um, ways to distribute content that they're, they're not thinking about. If social media is the only platforms they're looking to amplify content. And, and I know this because this is the work that I have to do on on the on the TV network side of mm. talent to get talent approved by the networks to get the shows that yeah. they've gone and done. And when I realized I could just be a steward to us and not have to go through the to be blessed that I got to work at MTV first off when mm. Youth Culture watched that network in the late you know yeah. in the late nineties where, where it was there when news was made and happened and like I mean you can't. <laughs> In New York, that usually happens at like two to four in the morning. <laughs> you know, it was really nice to have it happen at three thirty, and I leveraged that. I didn't know I was doing it. Uh, here's my thing: I didn't know a single person in this industry when I started. I didn't intern to get in. I didn't have anything right about it except I just loved meeting people and I organized that information. I stayed in touch with them. It wasn't just about meeting; it was about connecting, bringing them opportunities, and and I'm doing the same thing for podcasters. I, you know, I said. I launched my business in 98 from my dorm room with a database of talent. Yeah. Uh, and I'm doing the same exact thing with I Have a Podcast. And I Have a Podcast features featured podcasters, featured podcasts, independent podcasts. And, and ult- ultimately, I'd love it to turn into Goop. 
if you really want to know my secret strategy here, like if I could be like a, a LinkedIn for creator news, you know, platform meets Google. <laughs> if you ask me, I think this time next year or whenever if you're listening to this then, and this is now in the past, I have a prediction. I think that every brand is going to be a podcast directory. Like the directories are pass throughs. There's, there's no, there's no file stored in a directory. It's yeah. just, it's just data and information. The ping pong, you know, it's just mm-hmm. data that sort of talks to each other. I can see CVS. I can see Bravo. I can see the New York Yankees. I can see Disney. I can see so many brands just opening up the ability to organize to help independent voices get discovered. And what they'll do by giving them those stages, they'll give them unique access to their talent and to their properties yeah. and, they well, realize the power we have as podcasters. Well, one thing that I had recently gotten an email from YouTube is that <clears throat> they've hired now hired someone very high up. And I suspect within probably the next year or two, we're going to see YouTube podcast. Now, whether that's video, audio, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm watching that really closely because as soon as that kind of launches, I want to be in on that. But I want to go back for a moment to something you said, and you talked about visibility. And, you know, one of the things I teach, I teach about authority marketing. And in the beginning, I teach it's about getting visible. But you are right. If you want to, if you want to go big, at some point, you've got to get into that promotion, the media. So you've got to be able to get yourself out there. But one of the things I teach is that in the beginning, just get yourself visible, just get yourself seen, you know, you grow it to the point where you're so seen that now media wants you, right? And one thing I feel about social media is it's a place of social proof because you know that someone's going to check you out on social media, especially if you're not a huge name brand. If if someone's just checking you out one of the places. So for me, social media is about creating that social proof so that when someone goes and checks me out, it's not about creating huge audiences, though, you know, you network, you, you know, you build connections on social media. But for me, it's about the social proof so that when someone checks me out, I'm visible. I'm seen. They can they can go check out my LinkedIn and see that I'm very strong on there. It creates that impression. And so I agree with you that, you know, visibilities, I think beginning visibility is good, but there hits a point where visibility is just not enough. Oh, I co- you're like speaking to my soul. You're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> Yeah, more visibility. There was a point in time 20, 25 years ago where there where no press was bad press, right? We have so I'm gonna go back to this word of ownership that you threw mm-hmm. into this vocabulary, which I love. Because sometimes I say we have control over how we get discovered, but let's ha- I want to use your we have ownership. We have the ability to have ownership over when, mm-hmm. where, how, and with whom we get discovered by being in which room, by talking yeah. about, by supporting by aligning, by moving. Mm-hmm. And you're right, more visibility. Look, you can connect this to the celebrity side of things. You know, there's mm-hmm. oversaturation. There's a point where they're just everywhere. I just see them everywhere. To me, that point is where they've no longer shared that experience and they mm-hmm. can no longer share that experience because sharing their visibility is no longer valuable to them mm-hmm. because there's in the ego, there's two things happening in the ego. One, it's serving. I've discovered you. Mm-hmm. I can find you and I can connect you with everybody. But now if everybody can see you, I start to feel foolish almost. Mm-hmm. So I stop talking about you because everyone can see you. Everyone has access to you. And I now don't feel unique or special, empowered to speak up. So this is just, oh, I love, oh my gosh. Kim, when I talk about the alchemy changes, like the future of every episode, this one is going to be one I listen to over and over again. This word ownership is like so powerful. The reason why I call myself the extraordinary word niche, I'm pretty Oh, that's it. it. (laughs) Yeah. Be impeccable in your speech is one of the. You're absolutely right. That's like what a what a blessing, by the way. That's really cool. That's a really that's a really cool trick you got there. <laughs> the thing was when I when I first started, I fell into publishing. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, as a kid, I was told by a teacher I should never write. I carried those words for thirty years. Me too. Two thousand and twelve, I decided I was actually I was in network marketing. I was in the MLMs. I decided to write books to teach people how to sell, how to recruit, how to build a team, and how to keep yourself motivated. And I decided to publish those on Amazon because it was an easy platform for me to share those books out to not only my team, but other people in my company. That was the goal. 
And that's what I did. You know, I didn't really have any goals beyond that. And, you know, I sold some books and, you know, I got, you know, people got to know me a bit. But in 2015, I fell into ghostwriting to help pay for my son's wedding. Hmm. And within a year, I am now running a publishing company. And I realized quickly, one of the things was the area I lived in, there was already a very well-known hybrid publisher that everybody went with. So I needed to differentiate myself And one of the ways I did that is I came up with the Extraordinary Word Ninja. And that took about a year, year and a half before, you know, I really found the title that I could own and make it my and make it mine. But once I did and I started using it, and I mean, this is something very simple that everyone can do, right? You can give yourself a unique title. Now, like I said, it took a year and year and a half for me to figure out what the title was. But once I did, I became memorable because people won't remember my name, but they'll remember that I'm a publisher and they'll remember that I'm the word ninja. I love that. You know, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank and he, he's called Mr. Wonderful. Do you know, do you know why he calls himself Mr. Wonderful? No, I don't. Because no one else would. <laughs> <laughs> and he says it, isn't that the most brilliant framing <laughs> Like it's all about, it is, it truly is, or is empowering own the ability. Hmm. See, I'm scarred a little bit from being a corporate creative in the nineties and early two thousands where IP was handed over. Any, any Hmm. dot com idea I had was owned by MTV. Any idea that I had was owned by MTV networks. The SOPs that I created to launch the networks Hmm. globally are owned. You know, that's like that, that's the name of the American business. And you hear this, mm-hmm. by the way, and I say American because it's very specific to the States. Yeah. These, I, this relationship between creator and IP is, is mm-hmm. such. Yeah. Uh, so going back to discoverability equals visibility. If you want more discoverability, the power of sharing is going to help you break through that glass. To me, it's the power of sharing. It's visibility to the mm-hmm. power of sharing, not times. It's not as soft as that. If, if I have the ability to sell 50 hats that are limited edition, as silly as that may sound, or if I give away one hat a week to my podcast guests, next time I go up to a podcast convention, if maybe even two of us happen to have the same hat, that opportunity for visibility and connection, that shared experience, Mm -hmm. it's something that allows them to share that the experience, the merch, the stories. Yeah. And if you want to ask me the most, what's the, the most valuable share? contacts that to me networking mm-hmm. that to me gets into yeah. the most valuable share where 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 for example if you love what you're hearing and i certainly will do this and if you want to see if i'm a good writer then you go ahead and check out the five star review that i'm going to leave you for this podcast <laughs> and i urge people to join me by the way please join me in the five star review club and like let's use our words to just express the gratitude and and acknowledge the power that we have mm-hmm. now as creators. And again, as creators by way of being creative through mm-hmm. skills and natural born talent, but also by way of trade and technology, uh, businesses that, yeah. that have to use social media, that have to demonstrate a product on QVC, that have to, mm-hmm. or Amazon, or, um, you know, have, have this ability to, you know, get content out there. And I have a, I have, mm-hmm. can I share, you talk about, you know, being, just being a wordsmith, by the way, I recently, you know, I imagine no, word every, ninja. Got to get a word right. ninja. I'm sorry, word ninja. ninja. <laughs> yes, every every episode gets some type of supportive blog article, blog post. I took my blog RSS and went over to Google News Publisher, and I got my RSS approved by Google News. So now I'm listed as an approved source on Google oh. News, and I'm seeing other websites take my Featured podcaster RSS, featured podcast RSS. My I have a podcast episodes RSS, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing those pop up on other websites now. I provide amazing link back and exposure for me, but that's that's just one of the ways that I realize that I have to make myself easier to share. Mm-hmm. This is like it. If I want if I want people to share, I got to come up with a link. If I want people to share, I have to have the 15 second ad. If the reason why people aren't sharing your 15 second ad is because you don't have one. That's a simple fix. It's yeah. okay. It all happens. So, so talk about that because I don't have a 15 second ad. Yeah. So talk talk about that a little bit more and talk about the sharing aspect. Oh, yeah. you say share, but 
What do you mean by that? Like you're talking about being shareable. So go into that a bit more because I think that is really important. And I think that's something that, you know, especially entrepreneurs who are looking to brand themselves, that's, that's the key element that they're missing. They know they need to share, but they don't know how to share. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, for me, there's, there was one metric that I could, you know, keep visible for my entire career. Share is the one thing on social media. Mm share a voice a percentage of and share a voice in the marketplace these are the share, sharing is in a tremendous tremendous value what i mean is being easier to be shared for example we might have youtube channels and yes. on our youtube channels we may have lots of videos but if you don't have a playlist then i can't mm-hmm. share your playlist onto my youtube channel so by you yeah. not creating a playlist because you think it's easier for everyone just to see all the videos, it actually prohibits me from being able to take a permanent feed from your mm-hmm. YouTube, which is like, let's talk about the power of yes. you know video exposure. <laughs> and I agree with you. Like what they're doing with podcasting is very, very exciting. Also, you don't have to wait for it to happen. Pinterest TV just launched. And if you've been if you've been creating like vertical social media content mm-hmm. for Instagram or Shorts, here's another place where you can go put it on on Pinterest TV. And the coolest part is that it's tappable, shoppable, interactive media. It's evergreen, always on. It sort of schedule it, and that releases in bundles, and then it mm-hmm. stays on forever, as opposed to uh, YouTube, where you can just kind of put it up instantly and then have instant access. There is an event that sort of happens with it. But if you have a product to sell, if you have maybe a free giveaway that you want to, you know, you talk about a resource that you talk about in a podcast, this can now be another engaging, interactive way to do that. So, but that being said, I am excited for YouTube to get on the podcast wagon. <laughs> it'll, it'll help all of us. Yes. Apple, Apple just helped us out. You know, Apple just gave us the ability to, with the click of a button, be able to stream from our computers to our camera iPhones because most of our iPhones have better cameras than our computers actually do. Yes. So now there's a seamless single button way. Yeah, just my accent came out. (laughs) (laughs) It only comes out usually like when, uh, depending on how hungry I am and how how thirsty (laughs) I'm not. Something's... (laughs) But with the single button, by the way, now I can have 4K video Mm -hmm. shot for me, the power of that, we talk yeah. about differentiating, we talk about how to stand out. Maybe we'll remember five years ago when standard definition TV, you know, the black bars were, we all had to wrestle. Do we want the black bars on the top or on the side? Or is it going to be squished or, you know, 4K is coming. And with that advent will come another jump in the mm-hmm. user experience. There will be a point in time where platforms don't accept content less than 4K. So if you're looking to invest mm-hmm. in evergreen content, and that's my favorite type, because that's like that's earned reach value, you yeah. know, to the nth degree. Then, then I recommend that. In terms of sharing, though, sharing for me is the metric I look for. That's how I know if that's my measure of value. Mm-hmm. We might even ask, I don't know if it's valuable or not. Are people sharing it? Yeah, it's 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 a learn and go, you know, sort mm-hmm. of you know approach. It's it's difficult to say. Look at your share numbers at the top, but let me tell you this about the share numbers at the top in the single digits. Oh, where every single follower, where you get to know who they are, where you like recognize fate, like talk to artists and, and musicians. And I'm thinking of all the times at MTV where you hear these horror stories of like, we had 10 people in the audience. That time that those artists have with that audience, that's like career defining. Oh, yeah. Those are the people that show up for you anywhere. Because it's not about the numbers. It's not. It's really, it allows, you it, could have it allows that sharing followers. opportunity. Yeah. You could have a million followers and have, butt kiss <laughs> i can't remember what book it was but i was reading a book and it was talking about the fact that if you had 1000 loyal followers mm-hmm. you're set for life yeah even a wow. hundred loyal follow- followers will will make your business huge oh yeah because these these are your brand ambassadors these are a hundred people who are saying you know, Vinny is the top person and I will not work with anybody else but. Yeah. Yeah. And they empower you. They empower you to be the best, the best possible mm-hmm. version too, which is the exciting. And that's, that's actually something I love. You asked, why am I kind of focused on this indie side of, that's why I, I do this on, on our, I say on our side, on the non-corporate side, where 
where decisions are made between people, not, not behind closed doors. And I think I really like that approach to creating content. And I, and that being said, I know how to get content shared. You know, one of the ways to get your content shared is to win awards. You know, you don't only have one shot in your lifetime to win an award. You have an annual shot, <laughs> Tony's, Emmys. There's a mm-hmm. schedule. So it's, once you figure out, and by the way, everything I'm talking about, I have documentation steps on how mm-hmm. to win awards on my website. So I'm very happy to make sure people you know, know that. Mm-hmm. But I've identified over 100 awards that I don't think most people that are in the social media podcasting space you know, are aware of, whether you're a marketing, you have a mm-hmm. newsletter, a website, you, you're a podcaster like me being like a, a guest. I don't even mm-hmm. have to be, have a podcast to be a podcast guest, you know, and, sure. and, and being a podcast guest qualifies me for certain awards too. So like, I don't even have to have a podcast to win a podcast award. What a great strategy for business owners out there. Mm-hmm to get inspired, to be, the seat is hot. Come (laughs) take my seat after me. The seat is hot. I'll tell you now. It's awesome being a guest. I think of, Mm -hmm. you know, like very traditional holidays. It's a lot of work. You know, I show up with a plate. I make sure I have value. Mm -hmm. I do my research. I know what the kids are doing. I got everyone's names right. (laughs) And I get to show up in the best way possible and and Mm -hmm. connect as opposed to, As opposed to being afraid of the questions that are coming my way, I get to show up, as you say, have ownership in who I am. With that, it comes the ability to collaborate at a clear level. My Mm -hmm. content strategy is my life. It's weird to say this, but it's my life strategy. I don't worry about at the end, did I say the right Mm -hmm. word? Did I say the right words at the end before I tell Google? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to edit my life so that I have to think about what Google thinks. By the way, Google hot shit now but like it's gonna have its time you know what i'm saying there's gonna be everything a time has there. its time there's going to be something new so, that comes out, and eventually google will be gone you know knowledge no. panels and all that we're obsessed with how we show up in google and i respect it again it's all about discovery so how you present mm-hmm. in discovery mode is important but this is why kim i said earlier with this rss blog feed that i figured out mm-hmm. Once I went to Google, then I went to Bing PubHub, Yahoo, and it was automatically published to Yahoo News. I got it on Flipbook. I'm able to get it up. Apple News is a little tricky. You have to be a publisher to be able to publish, but I can imagine the rewards that are there. And then LinkedIn has this feature called Mint mentioned in the news, and it's AI, lives in the feed of LinkedIn. And mm-hmm. if one of your friends is mentioned in the news, then it will actually alert in your feed, in the feed that so and so was mentioned in the news, and it'll link to an external article. So I did some research and found about like thirty websites that I know LinkedIn is definitely scrubbing to get that information. And some of them are really niche. You know, some of them are like beverage, cat, you know, beverage industry mm-hmm. websites. And I bring that up because <laughs> think of a way to get on the beverage website if you can. It's all about standing out. Imagine how we can all stand out on a beverage website right now. Think about the ways (laughs) that we can collaborate with a beverage. Find a way to stand out telling you that that is one of the ways that LinkedIn will then trigger, you know, the ability to share that something that happens outside of social media, share with your audience inside social media. So the reason why I am the editor in chief of I have a podcast.com is there was no website that was focused on podcasters, a lot of podcast conversations. But for us to get verified on social media, we need we need our name in the top of the H1 header news. And it needs to be about mm-hmm. us, not about our podcast, not a listicle, not 150, 30 or 30, 60 over 6. None of that helps when it comes mm-hmm. to getting verified. So I took the steps as much as I could as an indie publisher to set podcasters up with something I felt would be really valuable. And I say that based on the fact that when I work with my clients one-on-one, that's usually the first thing I have to, I'm focusing on anyway, is voice share, share a voice. So I'm making sure your voice is getting shared and I'm making sure the, sh- the amount of your voice in industry is relative and that's measured through the news. Mm-hmm. And these are the ways that these platforms now measure your ability to get verified, um, depending on the territory that you live in, yeah. because news saturation is different for different territories. So you know, theoretically, wow. it's it's easier to get verified in a smaller country with less press because there isn't as much saturation as there is here mm-hmm. specifically in America. So, but some people yeah, figured I mean, out a way around that. So don't don't pay to pretend like they're you know you can pay to pretend like you're in a different country. They'll get you. So just, but I'm here to help you stand out. That's my that's my mm-hmm. thing. Is like 
I don't work with celebrities. I work people who, with people who, who are called to do great things in life. Some of them might be celebrities, but they're still seeking discoverability and visibility yeah. just for their actions, not for their projects. That's the, you know, it's the yep. same thing. And it's the same game. <laughs> just the prices are just, you apply for an Emmy. It's like $1,800 for your application fee. When I apply for a, a W3 award, it's usually, I don't know, I think under $100. And then 250 for the award if I win, you know, but the, it's expensive. I get it. But all awards have a process. Mm -hmm. They're institutions. They're or academies, actually. So, um, again, no foul there. And I, there's anything I can do. They're not help. just there to hand out awards. They're there to make money. Well, they're there. To, they're there to make money, but we're here to leverage it. So, so by the way, yes. I take that award uh, just last month. IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. We, so we were talking about visibility. Let's talk about mm -hmm. credits. Credits are a killer way for more yes. visibility. So credits on Internet Movie Database, imdb.com. Mm -hmm. That's where you go to see your TV and film. Podcasts are an approved intellectual property, a form of intellectual property that can receive credits as of a couple of years ago. So this is a data point that Google most likely doesn't know about your, your podcast. You as the owner of your podcast and producer and your entire team now gets credit. You have the ability to give them credit. All of your guests are connected to your episode too. It's a data point that does not exist on any Apple, Spotify, Podbean, Anchor. There's no platform that will give Google this or, or Bing or search engines this type of information. This, these, these, this amount of link backs mm -hmm. is this, you know, in digital world, link yeah. backs are our quality of, of, Link backs are proof that someone has shared us. That's like breadcrumb that says this person has shared me. And that's a, mm -hmm. I know that in sharing them, they successfully are pushing people in my direction. So those link backs are powerful for discoverability. Mm -hmm. I promise this is a real promise. You can go to my website and it's, you don't have to pay anything. It's right there on my creator hub. It's called how to get your podcast on IMDB. Cause I'm so mm -hmm. excited about this for all y'all to be in my world. Like in TV, Every single show, every appearance, everything I've ever done is on that network, mm -hmm. on that on that platform. That's where the industry goes to look. You, that's like social proof for creators. Yeah. You know, where LinkedIn might be our business proof for people outside yeah. of the creative world. And and now we've got a way to get business owners on IMDb. You know what that leads to? Local news producers looking for experts who can speak about law and baking and all the things that happen yep. in lifestyle. You know, it's a tremendous ability to be in a talent pool. You you also get to connect your awards. So there's a data point between you and your awards. If you are a creator, I hope you have some type of LLC, some type of production output. A lot of us independent creators don't think of ourselves as, as production companies yet. If you read anything about the Mr. Beasts or any, any of the, like the, the, you know, the creators on YouTube, you'll see what I'm talking about. But we will have our time where we will yeah. need to the sake of ownership, make sure that we're yeah. constructed the way so that we can do licensing and aggregation and syndication and advanced levels of distribution with our content, which is really where you create the company. Is. So, you know, there's, there's several different things I've done. I've got my personal brand, Kim Thompson Pinner, the extraordinary word ninja. My company is RTI publishing, but my branding point is author to authority within the RTI publishing company. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can have all of those different things, but the company is the legal entity under which all of these things can exist and move and breathe and be protected. Yep. Yeah, I'm similar. My I'm VPE I'm VPE TV, and then I'm Vinny Potestivo, obviously. And then in between us is I have a podcast, which yeah. I spent a couple. I spent like I think I don't know sixteen hundred dollars to get it registered. Mm -hmm. So now, like, I'm really. Leaning into that 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 trademark and and moving it quickly. So again, well, all, Vinny, another level of ownership. I hate to do this, but we are and over so time. Is. We could so continue talking for <laughs> so so long. So you did just quickly mention your website, but just if people have heard this and they are interested in connecting with you, how can they get a hold of you? How can they find out more about you and what you do? Oh, I appreciate that. I'm on LinkedIn, Vinny Potas Devo. Look to social, look to these show notes for my social media info, but I do respond quickly on LinkedIn. VPE.tv is my website and I have a podcast.com is the platform we've been talking about. If anyone out there knows of a podcaster or is a podcaster who deserves a little shine, I've got a very crystal clear button 
that says mm-hmm. click here to submit your interview and i cannot wait to meet you and elevate these voices thank you kim so much for this you're so welcome Vinny. it's been a pleasure having you on the show you've been listening to the author to authority podcast the extraordinary word ninja kim thompson pinder has helped over 200 entrepreneurs professionals speakers and coaches write and publish their books that have become incredible marketing tools for their business And many of those have gone on to become Amazon best-selling authors and have used their books to land high-level clients and get on big stages. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at www.author2authoritypodcast.com. See you next time.